Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see you. I'm, I'm happy that you're here. It looks like we're going to be down a little bit this morning, but we're still going to be just as excited on my end. I'm going to be really super happy. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you guys very much for coming. Uh, I hope you all survived Christmas, enjoyed yourselves, and remember the true reason for the season. <clears throat> If you will, look at your bulletin. There's some announcements in there. I don't think any of them are relevant. Uh, <laughs> but there are some announcements that need to be made. The mud bugs date is going to change. See Brother Virgil. Uh, this Wednesday is church council, so if you're on church council, please remember to be here at 6 o'clock so we can have church council. Last month we got kind of busy and, and it slipped up on us. What? There's a... Yeah. Yeah. Are we doing that? Okay. Chris is in charge of the New Year's Eve watch party is starting at 7 o'clock. Don't ask me to remind them if you're not going to be here. Okay. Miss Martha says bring snacks, finger foods, and games, puzzles, and enjoy yourself. Uh, in the fellowship hall. Yes, sir. There is also going to be a, a baby shower on the 8th at 2 o'clock at the Bivens Community Center, and she is registered at Amazon. Anywhere else? Okay. All right. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Okay. Go ahead, Miss Andy. Uh, Tony, do you want to answer her? Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for just blessing us with an opportunity to come together. I pray, dear God, that you are with this the remainder of this service, that you will lift our voices in praise to you, dear God, that we can open the Bible, we can study your word, and we can leave this place encouraged by your grace. Amen. Amen. Ms. Krista?
International Mission Board to help all of our missionaries across the seas. Um, and then, are there any birthdays or anniversaries? No? Well, I do want us to sing happy birthday to Jesus, so let's stand up and <laughs> sing happy birthday Jesus.
sometimes I can't get my throat clear. <laughs> Gary, did you know? Think about it. To everyone who feels a little sad, you're not alone. The season is a time of tradition, and when something is different, it's hard to accept. But this season is really about a redeemer and savior. He can make new the used and empty. He can restore the broken. He can sustain the weak. He can be the light in the darkness. He can hold the ones in mourning. He can comfort the anxious heart. Be still and soak up all the beauty and treasure of Christ above all other circumstances, just like Mary did. The faithful servant mother of a most humble and most mighty king as others marveled at the news of Christ's birth, she sat quietly and reflected on God's promise fulfilled in plan unfolding. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary, did you know?
Yes, ma'am. You look miserable. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that on the microphone? <laughs> Would you pass that one back, please? Thank you. Okay, we're not having children's church this morning. We're leaving the children in the sanctuary so they can hear this wonderful message that God's prepared. Woo! Woo! It is good to see that the Smith family is back with us today, and baby Cope is here. Yeah. Is there an update we need to have, Miss Hannah? She said... Okay. We will be in Luke chapter 2, continuing our theme. <clears throat> This is really one of my most enjoyable sermons to preach. It really is, because this is the sermon that's after Christmas. We generally have a, a method where we work up to a specific Christmas orientation or message, and then afterwards we start to take down the decorations, the tree will disappear, the lights come off of the house, and people stop celebrating Christmas. Uh, so what I want to show us is in Scripture, what did they do after Christmas? This is really after Christmas, after the birth of Jesus. So we're going to see in Scripture what the people did after Christmas. And as Christians, I think this is a powerful message because it teaches us what we should be doing after Christmas. And I get excited. You guys know my wife. She's excited all year round. We could do Christmas every day. <laughs> Sunday is really the day for me where I get really super excited because I know that I'm going to have a chance to open the Word of God. I'm going to have a chance to read it to you. And I'm going to have an opportunity, I hope, to challenge you to make you think about the words of Scripture because it's okay if you've been in church your entire life and you've heard the message, but did you ever think about it? Did you ever question, how does this pertain to me? And I don't want anybody to leave here today that is not challenged to think about how the first century reacted after Christmas compared to the way we do it today. Uh, <clears throat> I think, I, I got to be honest, I think they did it better. <laughs> I really do. Uh, generally speaking for us, after Christmas, the tree comes down, the lights come down, the gifts that you know we didn't want or don't fit, they have to go back to the store, so you have to get in line, you have to find a receipt, you have to do all of those things, then you have to decide what you're going to get for yourself. And in this particular instance, we're going to look at the Word of God in reference to what happened for, let's just say, the surrounding families after Christmas. And I, and I love the thought of that because this will really and truly lead us into what we can be doing today since it is technically after Christmas Day. Before we begin, I'd like to ask, Brother Jason, would you open us a word of prayer, sir? I do, Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I just want to thank you for the blessings and allowing us to come to your house, dear Lord, to, to study your word, Lord, to, to celebrate the birth of, of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, I just ask that as we open, open your word, prepare our hearts, and receive the message that you want us to hear, dear Lord, that we use it for the own glory of you, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to put, be with brother, brother Paul, that you give him the message that you want us to hear. And these things I ask. Amen. Amen. So what happened next is the title. We're going to start in Luke chapter 2. We're actually going to begin in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. So everybody should have your Bibles open to Luke chapter 2, verse 8. We're going to hopefully get down through verse 15 or 16. I really designed this to be a short message. I really did. I know. Uh, I, I did. I, I intentionally designed this to be a short message. So if all goes well, we will actually be out early today. Really and truly, it could happen. It could be our very own Christmas miracle. <laughs> So, beginning in Luke chapter 2, we're going to read verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Verse 9. 
And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Now, you, if you've been following me through the, the build-up to Christmas, you know I've said this already a couple of times. Every time there is a scripture reference to an angel, the people actually respond in fear. And I want you to think about that for just a second. It, usually the way that they appeared would actually could be scary, but then... Think about the description we hear, we have here. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. So this is the glory of God is around this particular angel. And, and, and the people responded to the glory of God with great fear. I don't completely get that. I would love, I would love to have an angel just boom, just be here right now, even though it didn't walk in the door, even though the door didn't open. And just to see the glory of God, that would be such a glorious glorious thing to take part in but every time in scripture that happens the people always respond exactly the same way they were oh, we went too far went too far oh we're getting out early today that's the goal verse 10 and then the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. So the angel appears. Who does it appear to? It appears to the shepherds. There's a lot written about the shepherds. The shepherds were the lowly class. The shepherds were those people that smelled like the sheep when they came into town. And you have to understand, they didn't come into town real regular. And when they did, they've been with the sheep. And even in this particular instance, it's at night and they're there where? With the sheep. So they're not sleeping indoors. They're sleeping outdoors with the sheep. So these are people who are living a very hard life. And the people who are living a very hard life are exactly the people that God wanted to make sure knew that baby Jesus was born. So boom, there he was to the lowliest of the people in the world to let them know that Jesus Christ had been born. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we overlook that, that God appeared to normal people working their nine to five in the middle of their busyness, in the middle of their mess, God sent an angel to let them know that he had good tidings and great joy. He, he was not there to scare them. He was there to tell them good tidings of great joy. He was there to give them a powerful message, and he says that message will be to all people. I love that word, all you guys aren't as excited as I am. I don't know why you're not as excited as I am. Like, it was all of them. That meant all of them actually includes us. So the angel showed up 2,000 years ago, where in the middle of the field with shepherds who were just working their regular 9 to 5 to give them good tidings and great joy. And he said that that great joy will be to all people. You get to be a recipient of good tidings and great joy. You do. It's not about the holiday hustle. It's good tidings and great joy. It's not about gifts under the tree or gifts that have to go back to the store. It's not about electronics that you can't figure out. It's good tidings and great joy to all people. That includes me. I have the right to be happy today. Why? Because the angel came. You have a right to be happy today. Why? Because the angel came. Because it said it was good tidings and great joy, which will be to all people. Now, if the good tidings and great joy are for all people, and I'm included in that all, and you're included in that all, why do we have so much depression around Christmas? Why do so many people get so uptight and so caught up with money and gifts and bills and presents and, and dinner parties and, and breakfast parties and lunch parties. And, and it's all about things that have nothing to do with what the angel was there saying, the good tidings and great joy. There's so much depression around Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, because we, as this group of all people, have forgotten to let people know that it is good tidings and great joy. It's not a hassle to have Christmas. It, it is not a hardship to be reminded that baby Jesus was born, amen? It is a good thing, and it should bring great joy to whom? All people. All people. That's even that one person in your group that you know that is always just pig pen. Dust clouds always around, and things are never going well for pig pen. 
Big Ben has the same right to be happy as I have to be happy. Why? Because that baby came not just for me, but for all people. Good tidings and great joy. I don't know, some of you might be sleeping. Point number one. I showed it to you already. The message is still for us. We still have good tidings and great joy. Why? Because the angel came. The angel came where? Not to the bankers. Not to the king. The angel came to that shepherd or those shepherds out in the field just working their regular nine to five. Sleeping with the sheep in the middle of the night. Protecting them from the wolves. Trying to see to it that other people would have the comforts of wool and meat to eat. The shepherd's just doing his job. He's just trying to get through his shift, and the angel showed up. But that angel left a message that's still available to us today. You have a reason for good tidings and great joy. You have a reason to not be depressed. You have a reason to not worry about all of the anxiety that the world tries to dump on you because God cared enough to have that little baby born and to send that angel to make sure that those shepherds who were out in the field didn't miss their Messiah. Verse 11. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord? I told you it's going to be a short message today. Point number two don't miss the Messiah. Why is there so much depression? Because people are forgetting that Christmas is all about baby Jesus and not about them. It's not about your kids, it's not about your grandkids, it's not about your spouse, it's not about any of those things. But Christmas is all about good tidings and great joy that were wrapped up into a package that we call Jesus. The Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. And think about that for just a second. So the angel showed up in the field and he says, don't be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all people. And he says, then a Savior is born to you to this day. Uh, that Savior, ladies and gentlemen, has not stopped being the Savior because of a passage of time. That Savior is still our Savior. Amen. Some of you just aren't as excited as I am. Like you might not have been saved. Have you ever been in trouble where you needed help? Jesus is here to help. Have you ever been in that situation where no one could possibly help you because things were just completely out of control? Jesus can still help. That Savior that was born 2,000 years ago is still the same Savior today. Why am I excited today? Just because he's still here. Do you know what else I've learned? In my lifetime, I have found a way. I have found a way. It's hard sometimes, but I do it anyway to get myself in trouble. <laughs> I'm actually pretty good at it. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> I have found a way of making sure that I can always find trouble. I'm in desperate need of a savior. And I have good tidings and great joy that was delivered by the angel that that savior was born and he's still available to me today and tomorrow because I'm probably gonna need him then too. Sometimes I'll squeak through one day at a time and not get myself in too much trouble, but I can always count on tomorrow. And when it happens, whoo, I'm glad I have a Savior. I'm glad that the good tidings of great joy that were delivered is still effective. The Savior is still the Savior. And the great thing about that is if I have had this habit of my entire life of seeing to it that I get myself into trouble, and Jesus has always been there to see to it that I get myself out of trouble, I'm not mentioning Jericho. Hey. But if I know that he's always been there for me, then I can share that with someone else who finds themselves in that same predicament. That Jesus is available to each and every one of you today, tomorrow, until the end of time, as long as you draw breath, that Savior is there working for you. Verse 12. 
And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Notice here that they use the word you. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The great thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that that babe has already been identified. And because that babe has already been identified, you're not responsible for going out and finding him. You're not. I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself here, but you want to know why you're not responsible for going out and finding him? Because the angel showed up to those common shepherds to tell them that the Messiah was born today. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be to all people, that's us, and that you will find that babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. History identifies that babe for us as Jesus. Woohoo! History has already taken care of all of the work that you have to do to find your Savior. All you have to do is find Jesus. You don't have to identify Jesus. He's already been identified. You don't have to ask, is Jesus capable of actually being my Savior? Because the angel actually says, today, your Savior is born. I bring good tidings of great joy for all people. And this will be a sign to you. And you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. As Bill Ingvall says, there's your sign. Verse 13. Okay, Harley, help me out. It was working a minute ago. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying... I wasn't ready for that one yet. <laughs> I do love you guys. I really do. And this is so exciting to be here shortly after Christmas to celebrate this particular moment. And there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying... Now in the beginning we saw what? We saw an angel. We saw an angel that had showed up to tell us what? That... that we did not need to be afraid that he was coming with good tidings and great joy. And then he begins to tell us that our Savior is born this day. And then he tells us that we can find that Savior lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And then he goes on to tell us that suddenly there was a multitude of angels. All of a sudden it's not one angel, but there's a multitude of angels. And what are these angels doing? They're praising God and saying, now, as a young man, I, I, I always picture, like, this is when the Alleluia chorus would kick in. Okay. Easter's about birth. and Okay, we'll argue later. <laughs> that's when the Alleluia chorus would kick in, and then all of these angels would be singing. In my mind, that's what I picture. I picture all of a sudden, there's, there's just the sky is filled with angels, and they're all singing. And then I went to seminary, and they said, no, it doesn't say they're singing. It just says they're saying. And I'm like, well, that just... Kind of a bummer. I like the picture of them singing better. But then I, I start to understand, wait a minute, I have heard myself sing, so sometimes it's better off if I just tell you Jesus is your Savior, amen? I'll take that one. So I don't have to sing it to you, I can just get up here and I can tell you. Why? Because that's what the multitude was doing. They were telling the shepherds that the Savior was here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, had an effect on the shepherds. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is something that we miss out on. What you see here is that the shepherds, the common people who were in the field, received a message for all people. And that message was that it was good tidings and great joy. I mean, we're just saying it. Okay, now go to verse 14, Harley. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We have good tidings, we have great joy, and, and, and we're going to receive goodwill and peace towards men. Now, this is a theological debate here. So is, is, is he saying that there's, there's going to be peace and goodwill towards men, so people are going to have peace and goodwill towards me? Or is he telling me that I'm supposed to have peace and goodwill towards men? 
Yes is the answer to both of those things. We are the recipients of good tidings and glad joy. We are the recipients of the good news. We are recipients of the gospel message that Jesus Christ was, be, was born. And because he was born, then there will be peace and goodwill towards men. So now we have become the ambassadors of peace and goodwill. You want to know what? I got to be honest with you. It is awful hard to start a fight with somebody when they're being nice to you. Amen? You can try. Amen? And there was, you notice the ladies said amen to that, right? None of the men did. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> you can have peace and goodwill towards men. And if we are exhibiting peace and goodwill towards men, guess what we receive from these men? Peace and goodwill. Have you ever smiled at somebody and then noticed that they smile back? You, you're giving them goodwill and they're returning that goodwill. Have you ever shared with someone a kind thought or a kind word and have them respond negatively? Yes, I know there's an exception to the rule, but what I'm talking about here is that in general, what we see here is that the angels were all of a sudden saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, goodwill towards men, peace and goodwill towards men. We, we are supposed to have peace and goodwill towards men so they can return and have peace and goodwill towards us. You want to know how you can guarantee that there's going to be a fight? Show up and say something negative. Amen? Happens all the time. Am I the only one? Nobody wanted to say amen to that. Like, oh no, Claude, that never happens to us. It's just you. <clears throat> it's not just me. It's how the world works. How do we know that's how the world works? The angels are telling us so. The angels showed up to tell the shepherds in the middle of their nine to five. That they have good tidings and glad joy for all people. That's us. And that our Messiah was born so that we could have peace and goodwill towards men. We, we don't have to argue. We don't. We don't have to fight. We have the ability to have peace and goodwill if we can remember our Messiah is already here. Our Savior has already arrived. Verse 15. It worked that time, Harley. I don't know. <laughs> so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, continuing in verse 15, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. i got to go back to the beginning of verse 15 for just a second. So it was when the angels had gone away. So this is what happened after the angels had gone away. They came and they delivered a message. The message was what? Peace and goodwill. The message was what? Do not be afraid because I come to bring you good tidings and glad joy to all people. So the angels came on Christmas to deliver that message to us, to all people, that the Messiah was born. And then after they received that message, this is where the preacher comes out, after the preaching was done... After the message was delivered, you guys have to do something with it. You do. Like this is the part where it says that so it was when the angels had gone away, the angels were gone, that the shepherds said to one another, like, well, they're just sitting around. What are we going to do? And they decide, verse 15, let us go now into Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass. Let us get up off of our church pews and let us go out and let us see this thing that has happened. What happened? The Messiah came. What did he bring? Peace and goodwill. You know how hard it is to find peace and goodwill if you watch the news? I don't see it. I have not seen one video clip from Fox News yet talking about how everybody's getting along. Hadn't seen it. I don't even try CNN anymore. I'm sorry. <clears throat> after the angels were gone, after the message was delivered, this is really key. After Christmas, the shepherd said, let's go see. Now, the great thing about that is, ladies and gentlemen, that tells us a lot about human interactions. If you tell somebody something, they're not necessarily going to believe you. Amen? Amen. They're going to want to go see. They're going to want to go see. They're going to tell you the, the, in, the, in a very southern, polite way, show me. That stuck with me from Missouri. We're the show me state, so it's okay. 
They're going to want to see this thing that you've told them about. And the great thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is if you have identified where that place is that you can show them, then you can invite them to come with you to that place so you can show them so that then now they can believe. You see, the shepherds didn't just take the message and disappear. They didn't just say, you know what, that was awful nice of those angels to come let us know that. Now let's get back to work. No, no, the, the angels left and the shepherds of their own volition said, you know what, let's go see. And I want them to come see. I want them to think that this is a place where they can come and see. I want them to know that. And the only way they're going to get to know that, ladies and gentlemen, is if we do our part to show them that we actually believe that the Messiah came and that the message of good tidings and great will was going to be for all of us, for all time. We have to show them the message the same way the shepherds had to go see. Point number three, but we're not done. Don't get too excited. The good news prompted them to action. I got to ask you, does the good news still prompt you to action? Does the good news encourage you sometimes just to get through the hard day? Does the good news deliver to you enough glad tidings and joy so that you have the ability to share glad tidings and joy? Do, do, do you think after the, the message was delivered that now it's yours so you have the ability to do something with it? Or, or do you think, okay, great, I'm glad those angels left, now I can go back to sleep. I'm glad Brother Claude finished on time because now we can make it to lunch. I, I'm, I'm ahead of schedule. We're going to make this happen today. <laughs> Don't count on that ever again. Verse 16. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. My favorite part here is and they came with haste. They didn't just come, they came with haste. They didn't just show up, they showed up in a hurry. They didn't just sit around in the field going, well, that was kind of nice. Maybe we should tell somebody about that when we get back into town. Heck no, they got up and said, all right, guys, we got this message, let's go see. And they got up in a hurry and they went to go see. When was the last time that the message of Christmas encouraged you to move with haste for somebody else's benefit? When was the last time we understood that this particular story here, it's a wonderful story. And yes, I still think the angels were singing. I just picture that in my head. I wasn't there. I can't prove it otherwise. I just want you to know that the angels showed up in the field where the shepherds were so nobody would miss out on Christmas. It was an important enough message that God wanted everybody to know. Not just the wise men who found baby Jesus on their own, but the shepherds, get this, that weren't even looking. They also found baby Jesus. In the middle of their busyness, they were stopped by God to let them know that there was this wonderful thing that was taking place. And then that encouraged those shepherds so much so that they moved with haste to make sure that everybody else could know. How do I know? Read the rest of the story. They didn't just find the baby Jesus and go, okay, that was nice. No, no, they started to tell everybody, hey, you're not going to believe this. We were out in the field and these angels came to us. They told us there was this baby born in a manger. And then we ran to the manger and boom, there it was. Good tidings and great joy to all people. The Christmas message didn't stop at the birth of Jesus. I got to be honest, the Christmas message started at the birth of Jesus. And it only stops, ladies and gentlemen, when we don't do our part. When we don't do our part. So, at this point, Miss Krista, you have a song for us. I don't remember which one it was. What can I give him? The altar is open. You're welcome to come down and pray. The church is open if you'd like to come and join a membership. As long as I've been here, we've never kicked anybody. Oh, wait, hold on. As long as I've been here, we've accepted everybody who came forward. <laughs> it's good tidings and glad joy for all people, and that includes us. So let's stand up. Let's sing as though we have a reason to sing. And then let's leave this place with haste because we have a message that still needs to be spread.
Thank you. Thank you very much for coming today. I'm going to ask Brother Danny Smith, would you close us in a word of prayer, sir?